Some of you may know, some of you may not know, most of you probably wouldn't even care. But I like to read and record stories, make videos for them and post them on a very popular website. You know the one. Now, the videos that I make are very low budget, nowhere near the professional quality like others put out. I don't even own a computer or have fancy recording equipment like they do. I do it all from my iPhone. The reason I am telling you all this is because this is what led up to the encounter I had last night. An encounter with the devil. I arrived home from work yesterday afternoon around 5.30. I did my normal routine, make coffee, make dinner, drink coffee with dinner, which consisted of 3 hot dogs and 2 packs of oriental flavored ramen noodles. That's been my dinner now for about 2 weeks because, after all, I work for a living, therefore, I'm broke. Anyway, I sat down at my dining room table and ate my food. After that, I decided to try and record a story. I reached in my pocket, pulled out my iPhone, and set up the screen recorder. I was just about to press the record button when suddenly, my entire house lost power. I was in complete darkness. I know I paid the electric bill. I thought to myself, that's why I'm broke. Just then, a red light started to appear in mid-air, directly in the center of my living room, growing brighter as each second passed. Soon, thick gray smoke began to flow out of the light, so thick that I began to cough and choke uncontrollably. Suddenly, an intense yellow light flashed binding me. I covered my eyes with hand to shield them from the light. Seconds later, I moved my hand and every single light in my house was back on. The smoke had cleared and there he stood, the devil. That's right. Satan, Beelzebub, the prince of darkness, was now standing in the middle of my living room holding a pitchfork. His entire body was blood dead, from the waist down, resembled the back end of a goat with hooves, hair, and a tail. The upper part resembled that of a very muscular man with arms, hands, and a head with horns. His face looked exactly, and I mean exactly, like Dave Call when he played the devil in the Tenacious D, Pick of a Destiny movie. I love that movie. I have it on DVD and Blu-ray. Anyway, we stared at each other for what seemed like forever. Finally, I asked sarcastically, What the hell are you doing here? The devil smiled. I am here to kill you and take your soul to hell, he said. What? I asked. Why? Well, most people don't know this, he said. But when I'm not down in hell trying to figure out how to conquer all mankind, I like to browse a certain website for creepy and crazy horror stories. It helps me relax. I especially like the ones about me. Now, I've listened to many, many stories by many, many different people and they were all quite impressive. That is, until I found your stories. Your stories are dead full, pieces of trash. You read like a first grader, you sound like an imbecile, your editing sucks, your pictures are pretty cool though, but your name, holy hell, your name is the stupidest thing of all. You give storytelling a bad name, so I am here to kill you, enter the world of you and your pathetic attempts at entertainment. Now, prepare to die. With his left hand, he raised his speech fork high above his head as his right hand extended out toward me. Fire began forming in the palm of his hand. I started to freak out. Wait, 
wait um you like to make deals right yeah let's make a deal i said he lowered his speech fork and cupped his hand to extinguish the flames he then stared at me with that clint eastwood high plane stifter stare and asked what kind of deal um okay devil uh, i said nervously if you can do the three things that i asked you to do then i will let you kill me and take my soul to hell but if you can't then you have to play all my videos in hell on a loop for eternity the devil that raised his head in confidence and said i can do anything deal i just made a deal with the devil i thought to myself what am i gonna do now i thought about it for a little while then figured if i was gonna die i might as well have some fun with it all i said okay devil can you do the macarena and sing the part of the end the devil placed his speech fork on my couch stood in the center of the room he began to bounce up and down as he extends his hands flipped them over crossed arms to touch his shoulders uncrossed back to touch his head then grabbed his hips and swing them around in a circular motion and said hey macarena at the end that was hilarious i wish i had the frame of mind to videotape it i burst out laughing done the devil said what's next i couldn't stop laughing you are gonna pay for this the devil said oh okay okay devil i'm sorry i said trying to compose myself let me think given the rare chance that i would actually beat the devil i thought i wanted something to show for it i said okay devil can you give me 37.2 million dollars in hundred dollar bills in a brown duffel bag the devil smiled and said that's easy he snapped his fingers and suddenly a brown duffel bag appeared in the floor by the front door it's all there the devil said you can count it if you want i figured i get to live just a little bit longer so i did and yes it was all there done the devil said again one more and you're mine <laughs> the devil grinned his maniacal grin i told you before i can do anything he said okay i said to myself the time for fun and games is over time to get serious after all my life depended on it i desperately tried to think of something that the devil could not do nope he can do that nope he can do that too i was shaking my brain i just so happened to look over at my television set in my entire christmas movie collection on the bookcase underneath then it hit me christmas i thought to myself i love christmas movies i could watch them all year long hallmark has the best though i got you now devil i'll be right back i said i ran desperately into my bedroom and grabbed the one thing on my nightstand that has never let me down I held it in my right hand and placed my arm behind my back and walked out to the living room to face the devil one last time. I stood there face to face, eye to eye with the devil. I have a special place in hell for you, he said. I chuckled. I don't think so, devil. Can you? I moved my arm from behind my back. As I did so, I asked. Can you put your hand on the Holy Bible? The devil shrieked and stepped back. You can do anything, right? Do it, I said. Do it and take me and my soul to hell. What are you waiting for? I yelled. He died. He really did. I've got to give him that. The devil shrieked continuously as he lifted his hand, placing over the Bible. about four inches away the shrieking grew louder as he lowered his shaking hand about two inches away 
thick black smoke and fire began bursting throughout his whole body. At one inch away, the devil shrieked the most ear-piercing shriek that I have ever heard in my life. I covered my left ear with my left hand and fell to my knees, holding the Bible in high above my head in my right hand. Another blinding flash of light, I closed my eyes once again, I opened them, and the devil was gone. I looked at the clock in the cable box. It was 6.37 a.m. I slowly rose to my feet. My first thought was, how am I gonna get this suit off my walls? Seriously though, I held the Bible close to my chest and thanked God for helping me. Just then, my phone rang. I placed the Bible on the dining room table and picked up my phone. Unknown caller, it read, I usually don't answer calls from numbers I don't know, but after what just happened, I figured, what the hell. I pressed accept and held it to my ear. Before I could even say hello, I heard the crackling of flames mixed with desperate screams of torture and despair. Then I heard it, a familiar voice, my voice, very faintly in the background. It was one of the stories that I read about four months ago. I smiled. The sound of the devil shrieking was heard right before the line went dead. I ended the call and immediately blocked that number. I looked over at the duffel bag by the door and thought, what am I still doing here? I grabbed my phone and started to search Christmas themed towns in the US. I figured Christmas saved my life. I want to live there. I came across North Pole, Alaska. I grabbed a suitcase from my bedroom closet and packed all my Christmas movies in there, as they were the only things I cared about. I loaded them in the car, went back inside, and grabbed the duffel bag, my phone, and the Bible, got on the car, and left the rest of it behind. I called my landlord and told him I was moving out. I called my boss and quit on the spot. I drove to the nearest major airplane and booked a flight to North Pole, Alaska. I'm sitting in the waiting area right now, waiting for my flight. The first thing I'm gonna do when I get there is record this story. <laughs>